Now we have finally insulated this place, and I gotta tell you, we'll look at infrared in a minute, but it is real hot in there. Um, so if I look like I have been sweating my brains out all day long, that's because I have. You don't have to comment on that underneath the video. We are gonna real quick explain how these air barriers work. So we are building a little differently than you may be familiar with in the United States of America. In the US, we do things generally over the last couple decades, the cheapest, fastest way we possibly can, which is not very high quality. The reason we do that is because home buyers and homeowners have been asking professionals in the building industry for that for decades. So that's what people in the industry have learned to give normal people. If you are not the kind of person who wants the che cheapest, fastest thing possible, you need to watch more about this channel, figure out how to quantify and the language that you would need in order to talk about what it is that you do want. Quality has a specific set of goals and standards. So this is one of the ways to do that. When this stuff showed up on site for the Tiny Lab build, which I built with my mom and dad, my dad said, wait, this is supposed to be watertight? Uh, this is Solitex Mento, the sexy black shroud that's all over the outside of our tiny lab that's underneath the cladding. Um, you can see it above me on the exterior of our dry vault. So this is the outside layer, and this is airtight, watertight, does not allow either of those through, and it's vapor open. So it allows water vapor, humidity, to just come and go through it as it pleases. That's good because we don't want to stop it it generally, it's like a teenager. You don't allow it to do what it wants to do. It's going to find a way to screw up your life instead. So in order to prove to my dad, even though this feels like felt paper, uh, it's very nice feeling. It's got three layers in it. We are going to do a, a real quick experiment. By the way, we found out that in order to make this workshop work, um, plastic ice cream tubs are the easiest way to store nuts and bolts. And so in order to have a successful workshop, you have to eat a lot of ice cream. That's a new thing. So we're going to just stuff this in there. And I'm going to pour a bunch of water in on it. And we'll just see in a few minutes if that works. This is the Intello. This is the interior layer. This is airtight, watertight. We're going to test it in a minute. And also vapor intelligent. So depending on the humidity level that it is in contact with, it will open its pores or close its pores more to uh, control, to speed up, slow down the vapor uh, what we call vapor transport, if you want to be real nerdy about it. Uh, otherwise, we could just call the humidity movement in a building. So <clears throat> that is going to generally, because this is not going to be a conditioned space, it's just going to be dried. This just gives us a little bit of extra ballast. And that's what a lot of this stuff is about. The reason the tiny lab is such a difficult place to control is because there's not a lot of ballast. There's not a lot of extra wiggle room. This gives us wiggle room. Uh, just like an anchor on a boat gives you the ability to kind of like control where you're going. You could, I, I hear, you can drop anchor while you're actually going somewhere and it makes something happen with the, the ship. So all about that, anything in a home that you can use to kind of control subtly the movement of the house based on heat flow, airflow and pressure, moisture, air quality is what we want. So you can see here, no water in the bottom of my cup. No water in the bottom of my cup. Both of these things are totally watertight. They are totally airtight. We're going to see that later with the blower door test. Here's your diagnostic for watertightness, though. So we whip out our FLIR C2 camera, just a little consumer grade uh, camera that's easy to hang around your neck. First of all, we can see my little girl who's in a special mood today. She may be making noise. Um, she's hot, but the slab out there where the sun can shine on it is 82 degrees. And in here, where it's shaded and insulated, it's 76 degrees. That's a six degree difference already, and we haven't even done anything besides shade this place and insulate it from the sun and uh, things like that. So the slab is gonna hopefully hang on to a lot of its natural coolness. That means in summertime, it's gonna be cooler in here, and wintertime, it's gonna be warmer. Inside, we have all the Roxel comfort bats in, R15 walls, R23 ceiling. All you have to do next in order to make sure that this place is going to perform the way you want is attach the Intello, the interior air barrier. Uh, so this stuff is very nice to work with. All you need is a staple gun and tape. Put the first layer on, bam, 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 on the top to make sure that it's hanging level. We're going to, again, just like we did on the outside, attach the bottom to the actual concrete so that it's a complete air seal. I have a new favorite tape that we did not use on the tiny lab. This is called Contiga Multibond. It's meant for attaching the shroud, which is either the Intello or the uh, Solitex Mento, 
to something else, to some other material, like for example, concrete. Uh, when we attached it to the concrete all the way around on the inside and on the outside, we used half and half, and I didn't get a chance to show you because I was frankly in a big hurry, but right now I wanna show you how this works. You, uh, we can use half caulk, which is what I described in the very beginning, which is not my favorite, and I've always known that. I have caulked a lot, it seems like, in my life, and I never, ever get better at it. It's just always a disgusting, messy process that is never perfectly even. I end up with this little mountain range that I'm never totally sure is gonna air seal properly. This is the same exact thing, except it takes all of the stress of hating myself for being a bad applier out of it. So this is just a real gummy little adhesive that's like jelly. You can see how cool and kind of almost see-through that is. It's translucent. So it is a perfect bead of caulk, essentially. You apply this just like you would caulk in the same places, but without all the pain and suffering. So we're gonna put it on in the line of where we want this other material to go. In this case, because I'm attaching a piece of wood, I need to press real hard on this because if I start pulling this away, this paper backing, without having pushed it into this, it'll actually start pulling the, um, multi-bond along with it and it'll stretch out. It gets really, really stretchy. So it's really interesting. So once I've taken this along and I've pressed it into the material I want to bond it to, all I have to do is come along and grab this paper backing and pull it off. And you can see how beautiful that is. That is a perfect sealant between two materials that are not like each other. Like I said, I used this on the concrete and it works perfectly well on porous surfaces. You can apparently use this on brick. You can use it on wood like we're doing now. All of this is to make your life easier, to make your buildings higher performance and easier to build high performance because that's the whole goal. That's as simple as it gets, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of stroking of your building. There's a lot of smoothing out and touching and massaging the building, uh, spanking the insulation. This whole thing is just like a much better process for building. I'm just gonna say it right now. I'm enjoying myself, except for the fact that it is so freaking hot. So uh, we're going to next test this place because just because I said that it's awesome does not mean anything. Um, you know me and hopefully you trust me, but also diagnostics, critically important. So we're gonna test this place and see how exactly I did with the infrared camera and with the blower door so that we can actually prove that we have built something that performs better than any other shed in the world. Thanks for watching and tune in next time. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and stay engaged. Mm -hmm.